Hey there, movie people. It's Andy Timoner, your host of Bring Your Own Doc, and I am joined by uh, another amazing filmmaking team, actually a Utah-based filmmaking team, Salt Lake City, um, and uh, t uh, Tony Vinuku, who is the director of the film, and Erica Cohn, who is the producer and co-director of the film, In Football We Trust. Um, and this film follows four boys, uh, Polynesian boys who are of Polynesian descent, um, as they kind of go through this intensely competitive uh, sort of, it's like c called the Polynesian pipeline to the NFL. Um, and it's something that actually they had their premiere yesterday and it sold out 12,000, 1,200, 12,000. It sold out a football stadium, no. It sold out uh, uh, the brand new theater in Salt Lake City, 1,200 people. Um, and was extremely well received. So congratulations on that. Thank you. And I'm sure all the boys were there. Yes, yes they were. It's amazing. Yeah, it was a good experience for them. Uh, we had all of the boys as well as their parents that were out and a lot of NFL players that came out to support. Tell me what your film's about exactly. Tell us, tell our viewers exactly what the film's about because it's about these boys, but it's about so much more than that. Um, it's about the sport, but it's also really about uh, your culture. Right. Yeah. So uh, I, I came from the culture that we shoot these, uh, from the same culture and the same community that we, or uh, yeah, the communities that we shot these boys in. Uh, we have four of them that uh, all deal with uh, different struggles in their lives. One with poverty, another one with gangs, and the other one with just a God-given talent that, and what comes with that, like family pressures and high stakes recruiting. And they all use football as a through line in their life um, in order to help him in different ways. So we have one that deals with poverty. He's trying to, you know, just get an education, get through college. He has nine kids in a two bedroom apartment. And then you have uh, another one of our families that has dealt with gangs since their father. Um, and, and now it, it's rolled down to uh, his sons and they're dealing with the same gang uh, affiliation and the last name. Um, and so they use football as, you know, a way to to get out of gangs. And then you have our, our last uh, subject that is just really talented. I mean, he was highly recruited all nationwide. Uh, he ended up being, uh, I don't want to ruin the film, but the college that he goes with, he ends up being their biggest pick uh, in history. Mm. And so, but with that, you know, comes a lot of, of pressure from not only family, but uh, the structure and, and the, his surroundings of football, coaches, teachers, uh, early media, you know, all, all that types of stuff. So that's or all that type of stuff. And so that's what we see in this movie. Um, and we're able to tell these stories and, and a well-rounded story at that behind, like you said, the Polynesian pipeline, the culture behind that. What is the culture behind that? Like, so there's all these struggles because of a lack of support, a lack of, and all the things that we see happening globally actually right now. Um, there's a great, inequality in our nation um, and and so there's that but what is it about the Polynesian culture do you think that is so tightly that so tightly motivates uh, these boys to go in this way I mean is this the, the way out is there something that is it like from day one uh, football is just so deeply ingrained well it definitely has become a part of our cultural identity um, it it's not you know I don't think from when they're born, it's like it's the way out. But when you have a family of 10, family of nine, and one of the kids is really great at football and is excelling in every way in high school and college, it's hard not to push that. Agenda, know, yeah. Right, as, as, as parents and as, you know, so, uh, you know, you wanna support your cousins and we have big families. So um, the culture behind that though, uh, you know, we're, we're all, a lot of us are still first generation and our parents are still from the islands. And so, you know, football is new to us here, but it happens to be one of the first, um, know, big, really big, industries, that's right, industries that has embraced us and, mm -hmm. you know, and why, why, why do you think you guys are so good at it? <laughs> you answer some of that, Erica. We well, I think, Erica, that, I think that the there's. Um, I think that there's a lot of different reasons. I mean, um, we talk a lot about uh, Polynesians in general being very family oriented. Sports, Team. yeah, sports are 
a type of family. I know for me, I played high school sports. Um, I love sports. I love the game. Uh, I love football. I played softball. And that was my family in high school. And I really, that's something that I personally identified with and can really see the, the similarities between, you know, an, uh, your sports family, the team mentality, and then, you know, your family at home. There's a statistic that we start the film out with where Samoans and Tongans are uh, 28 times more likely to make it in the NFL than any other ethnic group. Uh, you know, a big reason for that, um, that Halotingata had from the Baltimore Ravens uh, mentions off, we actually, it's not in the film, but he mentions that the NFL uh, recruiters find Polynesians to be really big and really fast for how big they are. You know, most people that big aren't that fast. Yeah. And so, you know, physically, there's just we're, something we're to fit it. for yeah. that mm -hmm. game, you know. I was uh, like, African Americans like excel at it, you know. Right. Um, and have done really well in the NBA. It's like white men can't yeah. dance, you know, <laughs> but they can make movies. <laughs> and so, how did you two team up? I mean, did you approach so, Erica? Well, so I had, um, I had wanted to do this film about a year, well, maybe a couple years before Erica. But I had first approached Jared Hass, who was the writer and director for Napoleon Dynamite. And uh, he had jumped on and helped me with a couple interviews with our first uh, NFL athletes, Halo Tingata and Vaisi Kahema. We put together a rough cut, um, a rough little trailer, put it out there. It got some really great attention. I went through about a year, had found our boys that, that were going to be in the film, our subjects, and uh, later ran into Gerilyn Dreyfus, who was known, f in, known for... Impact Bonin, Partners. Right, yeah. Impact Partners. And she really liked the story. She couldn't believe it was a story in her own backyard. Yeah. And uh, that brings us to how I met Erica. Yeah, I was living and working in LA at the time and was born and raised in Salt Lake and knew Gerilyn and Gerilyn was really a, a mentor for me, kind of like Jared Hess was a mentor for Tony. And she called me and said, hey, I have this really amazing filmmaker, Tony Vainuku. It's his first film. He's making this uh, great, or he's putting together this great story about Polynesian athletes. I think you'd really identify with it. Come home and see what you think. Um, and Tony and I met up and I was really, really inspired by his passion and commitment to representing his culture on the big screen and felt uh, like I was really familiar with the subject matter because I grew up here and played a, a high school sports and was familiar with the Polynesian football phenomenon and uh, the rest is kind of history. Right. So yeah. you've been working together for like four years or something or three five five years? Five years. Isn't it funny yeah. how long these things take? Yeah, it's a lot, it, it, yeah. For other people, um, you know, in other professions to hear that is just these it's just incredible, but for a documentary, that's about that's about the average probably, or that's maybe pushing the top of the average, right. five years. But it takes a long time, and and especially if you're going to follow these guys, which you did. So so um, did it's funny because you you had a central question, or you had a you had something you wanted to show, you wanted to explore more deeply. You had that goal, you chose your characters, but you had no idea what was going to happen, right? No. You rolled the dice. Rolled the dice, definitely, but I mean, we definitely, uh, it, I was specific to when I had picked out a, a couple of our families. One of them I knew was dealing with gangs because my own family had dealt with gangs and I knew of their last name and they were notorious around locally for the, their, their family being known in gangs. And so I had found out that there were two sons that were playing uh, in their senior year, which was perfect time. And so I approached them. Another one of our, our subjects was Harvey Lange who was getting media attention since his sophomore year. And so it was, hard not, it was hard not to notice him. So he jumped on and later we added Fihi, who uh, he came on later, uh, went to where I had went to high school, um, uh, uh, the Highland High School where Halotingata had went to high school as well. And he brought you know, a, a different, a really deep cultural sense to it and also a spiritual side to the story. So you, know, you have gangs, you have this, uh, this uh, the, the talented kid that is that the NFL hopeful the, and uh, Fihi who who deals with a, yeah. know, some extreme poverty. Yeah, you spread your bets. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And just w want to tell a, a, a whole a, a well-rounded story. You know, mm -hmm. not just one side. How'd you know when it was over? Oh yeah. man, that was that was so tough. That was good. Um, because we were continuously shooting uh, throughout post as well. We had 600 of hours of footage and we're sorting through 
Um, and there were a lot of scenes that we ended up cutting. We kind of stopped the film once uh, all of our subjects got through high school and into college. Um, but there was so much that happened at college that we were like, ah, what do you do with this? Right. this credits? Is, right. Yeah, and we, credits? Some, of that, some of that was put in the catch-up cards at the end. Right. <sighs> yeah, it's tough, huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. How long is the movie? 87, 87 minutes. minutes. Nice. Yeah. Nice. People can pee when they have to pee. Yeah. <laughs> you made a feature. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Tony had always had this ideal that it would be under 90 minutes. And we first ended up with a three hour cut. And we were like, ah, oh, how do we whittle this down? How do we whittle this down? And it took uh, 18, 18 months of post to finally get it to 87. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, before we ever did you, started. Did you I, cut? Yeah. Did you cut the film? Well, no, no, no. We had three, three different editors. Yeah. And at the same time or no some yeah they were overlapping right right right. yeah because i'm cutting a film right now and i sometimes i at one point i had three myself and two others oh that's and then awesome other, otherwise one and the other but yeah either three or two at all times yeah. it's like building a house and it then is. rebuilding a house and then tearing the house down and rebuilding the house mm -hmm. change that room move that over there thank god for non-linear editing that's all yeah, i can tell seriously. you seriously right. Yeah, right. when I started, it was the shuttle system. So you change one thing, <laughs> yeah. you change everything after it. So, <laughs> anyway, congratulations on uh, your film, Thank and you. uh, and I hope that it continues to just keep continues to just pack the house. Um, are you? Do you have release plans yet? Any kind of distribution yet, uh, or are you here to sell it? We are here to sell, here to be discovered. Relativity Sports came on as a distributor, mm -hmm. um, but really looking for other partners and, and buyers here at the festival. What is Relativity Sports? Relativity Sports is a new branch of Relativity Media okay. that is focused more on sports content. Okay. So it'll be on TV and probably in theaters? We also, uh, ITVS was one of our first funders. So it's going to be on And PBS. so it'll be on Independent Lens mm -hmm. uh, post Super Bowl 2016. Okay. But theatrically, you're hoping to do that right. this year. That right. is, yeah. that is our big to do hope. That this summer, yeah. All right. Well, if you do, and you're opening in LA, then you come back to BYOD to our actual studio, and that's where we really break it down. Yeah. Oh, that's that when we exciting. show all the clips, and you know, yeah, I I never great. get a chance to see every movie um, before Sundance because I get the clips, I get the, tr the screeners like the day before. So, right. Um, but and there's 17 of them. But <laughs> <laughs> but when you come into the studio, we'll we'll go in depth. Cool. So I remember, what was the film that won the Oscar? Undefeated. Undefeated. Yeah, we had them in like the, the day after they won. So you might, you know, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen with your film? Yeah. Fingers crossed for you. Right. Thank America you. America yeah, loves football. You. Yeah, yes. America loves football. Yeah, and it's, re and it's really a, a great way to go about looking at what I think is a culture that people don't have any idea about, you know, and, uh, and the lives of people in Salt Lake City, and, and I didn't even know there was a Polynesian community in Salt Lake City, so the whole thing is kind of very unique and surprising. Right, Yeah. Right, so right. congratulations. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Absolutely. All right, stay tuned. We're going to bring you another team shortly. brought us from the islands to America so that we could better live for our families. And football just happens to be the best way for us to do that. I think they see NFL as like winning a lottery. One of the best running backs to ever come out of the state of Utah. They thought that was just a big Polynesian that knew how to run over little white kids in Utah. I knew that football was going to be the way out. Football means a lot to me. That's the only time I could hit someone and not get arrested. My family don't got money. Being able to support myself, it, it do a lot. The thing that's difficult for the kid is that their parents expect them to play in the NFL at the cost of everything else. I want to be the proud mom who checks in at the ticket box and it's like, my son is playing today. He's like, my number one fan, she's my mom. Come on! My dad and his cousins, they started regulators. Utah's most notorious gang members. The baby regulators. How did I escape that fate? Football. Oh, 
College UCLA. I don't want you to forget about the Trojan with ESPN. I know he's coming to USC. This is where legends are made. Right in the front line. The past is gone. The future lays out there at the 50 yard line. We come from a line of warriors. Our culture embodies what football is. I met a cotoa.